China plows ahead with its high-speed rail, connecting Southeast Asia to China and the Chinese Communist Party's way of life. Death sentence of loud drug king Mr. X commuted to life in jail. Huawei China releases Huawei Pay in Thailand. Interesting story. Nok Air Thailand unfortunately closes its doors for the last time and US troops arrive in the Philippines. Hello, I'm Stephen Clark with Johnny Siam bringing you the latest from Southeast Asia and the wonderful land of smiles, Thailand. Those and many other stories coming up. Thailand's police criticised for lenient handling of the Red Bull Air. The Red Bull Air, whose nickname is The Boss, is the son of Chalam Yuvadaya, whose family co-owns the energy drink mega brand Red Bull and ranks second in Thailand's richest list with a net worth estimated at 20 billion US. Thailand's National Anti-Corruption Commission has five police quality of mild dereliction of duty in their lenient handling of the fatal hit-and-run case against fugitive Red Bull Air, the boss. Now, Red Bull Air, whose nickname is the boss, we've established that, has been seen in public sporting events and elsewhere overseas. He's accused of being behind the wheel when his Ferrari hit and killed a motorcycle policeman. The tragic accident happened in the early morning of September the 3rd, 2012 in Bangkok. An NACC investigation found intention to exempt Red Bull Air, whose nickname is The Boss, now aged 35 from prosecution above all in charges of drug abuse and speeding. Forensic police concluded he was driving at least 177 kilometers per hour. The boss, as he's affectionately known, then 27, is accused of driving his black Ferrari when it hit the rear of the policeman's motorcycle at high speed, dragging his body along Sukhumvit Road before speeding away. The victim was a police sergeant, 47, who was based at the Thonglor police station. The boss fled on a private jet two days before he was due to face the charges. The speeding charge was later dropped when the one-year statute of limitation expired and a second charge failing to stop and help a crash victim expired on September the 3rd, 2017. The third charge and most serious charge, reckless driving causing death, remains on the books until 2027. The boss, as is affectionately known as, family co-owns the energy drink mega brand Red Bull and ranks second on the Thailand's richest list with a net worth estimated at 20 billion, about 617 billion baht. Well, with that sort of money behind you, you can run over anybody virtually and get away with it or buy your way out of it. Not saying he's done that and he's probably not guilty. It's curious why the Thai police have not gone after him over the reckless driving causing death, which remains on the books until 2027, when he's been spotted in Thailand on many occasions. Hmm, interesting. China's grand plan for a high-speed rail line linking its landlocked interior to the bustling port of Singapore through mainland Southeast Asia, where crews started laying tracks along the first 114 km leg of the line through countries in Mar, five years after breaking ground, with most of the many dozen tunnels and bridges it will need to be cut through Lao mountainous north now bored and built. Service is set to start by 2022. Starting in Kunming, the capital of China's Yunnan province, it will help the remote region tap into some of the Southeast Asia's largest economies while boosting China's political sway over them in the process. It will boost China's political sway, but to a limited extent. Southeast Asian countries remain anxious about China's goals. They noted the competing claims some of them have with Beijing in the South China Sea and the Chinese dams they blame for choking off the Mekong River and an exorbitating drought in recent years. 
a bird's eye view of the planned route would show it winding through Laos, Thailand and Malaysia before reaching Singapore, hitting the country's capital of Tien Sen, Bangkok, Kuala Lumpur along the way. Critics of China's debt diplomacy say Beijing is pulling those financial strings to have Lao do its bidding within Asia. As a member of the 10 national bloc, Lao stands accused of helping spoil efforts to mount a united front against Beijing's sweeping South China Sea claims. The leg of the new rail line running through Laos will be of little use to China if it can't extend the route south, keen as it is to connect with Southeast Asia's larger economies. However, Thailand and Malaysia are more reluctant to be drawn much further into China's orbit and unlike Laos, have the clout to be coy and dictate terms. Thailand is very cautious, very concerned about what's happening in Laos and Cambodia when these two countries are too dependent on China, liking them to de facto provinces of China. Thailand has moved cautiously in reaching a deal with China to build the route from Laos to Bangkok over cost concerns and put off plans to sign the contract until December. Malaysia even froze work on its leg of the mine from Thailand to Kuala Lumpur for nearly a year and agreed to start up again in April 2019 only after convincing China to slash the original 20 billion price tag by about a third. Analysts say China's dream of a high-speed rail line running the length of mainland Southeast Asia will be a harder sell still after the heavy hit the region economies have taken from the Chinese coronavirus pandemic. And the sad truth is nobody wants to deal with China anymore. Death sentence of Lao drug lord Mr. X commuted to life in a Thai prison. All roads lead to Lao. Historically, Communist Lao has been reluctant to admit it has a drug problem. But under their new Prime Minister, their country is keen to show it's flushing out criminals and corrupt officials. The recent arrests are part of his get tough message to the drug gangs. The meth men. At $8 a pop in Thailand, the best yabba pills rise in price the further they move from the source, bringing extraordinary rewards to the traffickers. Stamped with distinctive WY, the pink and green pills of the Myanmar drug labs, Malaysia's farm hands to Bangkok's high side, high society party crowds. Last year, Lao authorities reeled in a record 144 kilograms of crystal meth and nearly 21 million Yabba pills. Bangkok's criminal court handed down life imprisonment to Laotian drug ring leader Exana, Mr. X, Kopimpa, on charges of smuggling 1.2 million methamphetamine pills known as Yabba into Thailand. He was initially sentenced to death and the sentence was upheld by lower court in December. But the penalty was committed to life imprisonment because he cooperated with the courts. The Thai Court of Appeal found that Mr. X arranged for the drugs to be smuggled from Lao in vehicles with false roof compartments. The court ruled that the Xania must serve his term in Thailand, since the smuggling attempt was aimed at harming the Thai citizen. He was taken to hear the judgment from the Central Correction Institute for Drug Addiction, where he has been detained since he was arrested at Suwinapum Airport in 2017, arriving on a flight from Phuket. Police captured some members of this network in October 2016 after seizing 1.2 million Yabba pills through Nong Kai at the Lao border a day earlier. It was thought the drugs were being trafficked to southern Thailand for smuggling to Malaysia when seized. The subsequent expanded investigation led to Exana's capture. Exana has been linked to Thailand's wealthy elite, but has always denied being a major player in the regional drug trade. As you do when you get your finger caught in the pie. Official estimates say the kingdom has around 1.3 million addicts with drug convictions accounting for the bulk of Thailand's present population of 290,000, the 10th highest incarceration rate in the world. Drugs are destroying everything. They affect the security of our country, 
our society and people, said the Thai authorities. If you are living or while holidaying in Thailand, be aware the lethal consequences you could face if you decide to break the drug laws in the kingdom. And believe me, your country's embassy will only be able to give you minimum assistance. A river of dams and the battery of Asia. Water levels at the lower Mekong Basin are at a historical low, according to the government's watchdog. Despite the onset of the rainy season in Southeast Asia, 11 massive dams straddle the mighty Mekong River before it leaves China and flows into Myanmar, Laos, Thailand and Cambodia and on into Vietnam. According to the data provided by the Mekong River Commission, the water level in Nikon Penong was at 2.4 metres, well under the mid-range average of 4.5 Five meters. It is the lowest water level recorded in the last 20 years. Other provinces across Northeast Asia are reporting similar low levels. The colour of the Mekong is usually red because of the sediment flow, but this is the first in years, more than 20 years, where we have had crystal clear water. It means the water is not flowing. Compared to the other years, the water level is significantly lower. There has been hardly any rain in the past months. Experts say that unless there is an increased water discharge into the Mekong, farmers and fisheries will bear the brunt of the consequences come dry season. The China Factor The damming of the upper Mekong by China has caused massive droughts downstream. The severe lack of water in the lower Mekong during the wet season of 2019 was largely influenced by the restriction of water flowing from the upper Mekong during that time. China and other Mekong countries must show more transparency in their water data to ensure that those living in the Mekong can fight back against any eventuality. China needs to stop being greedy and cutting off water to the lower countries of the Mekong. That water is for everybody, not just for China. Oh look, China's building another dam. Huawei officially launches a Huawei Pay mobile payment in Thailand. Mm. Huawei Pay is a mobile payment tool that provides countless cashless payments. Cashless payment services for Huawei device users in Thailand's industrial and commercial banks of China. Public Company Limited is the first bank to support these services. First introduced to the Chinese market in August 2016, Huawei Pay is a mobile payment service rooted in Huawei's wallets, which provides countless cashless payment service for Huawei device users as part of the Huawei mobile service. Huawei Pay is designed with security in mind. It uses pins or biometrical authentication methods such as fingerprint recognition to authenticate customers for retail purchases. The Huawei Wallet app comes pre-installed in the newly launched Huawei P40 series, while for existing Huawei smartphone models, the app can be downloaded from Huawei's app gallery, Huawei's official app marketplace. In Thailand, the local merchandisers supporting Huawei Pay include Boots, Emporium, J-Mart, Major Cineplex, Dr. DIY, Susie Hario, Swarovski, Tesco Lotus, The Face Shop, the ever-present Chinese Communist Party, or CCP as it's affectionately known, and many more. If you have a Huawei phone and you live in Thailand, now you can have Huawei Pay Mobile app in Thailand and pay your bills at some stores. And please don't forget by Chinese law, Huawei must supply any information concerning the Chinese Communist Party security. So next time you're using a Huawei phone, say hello to the Chinese Communist Party Direct because they may be just listening. So if you're doing cyber sex with your loved one, you could end up on Pornhub. Thailand, the virus, as we know, has been hard on everybody. The budget carrier, Knock Scoot, has unfortunately said it cannot recover from all the costs from the pandemic 
and it is now declared that it's out of business. This will leave 450 staff members out of work. Might not be so good, but the company has promised to pay full benefits as per law entirely. So at least with their full benefits, it still doesn't help them without a job. Sad, but just another tragedy. Johnny out. The Philippines, Subic Bay. The US Navy is planning on a return to Subic Bay. Subic Bay was a naval base, but was handed back to the Philippines. Now prior, the shipyard was rented to a Korean company. A contract was won to lease the shipyard by a Chinese company, but the Philippine Navy stepped in and said that would be against the country's security measures. Now that the Subic Bay shipyard has been awarded to an American company and an Australian shipbuilder. So with the existing skilled workforce in place, the US will have approximately 130 ships having service works and whatever done at Subic Bay. So the US Navy will be regularly visiting. The American equity firm will predominantly do maintenance and upgrade works. The Australian shipbuilder has a contract with the Philippine Navy to build at this stage six ships and is in the past produced components for the new US destroyers. So all in all, that's probably a good thing for everybody concerned. Johnny out. The Philippines, the UN has raised concern over the new Philippine Anti-Terror Bill. The United Nations Human Rights Office warns that the Philippines Anti-Terror Bill deludes human rights and a feared crackdown on all Filipinos' basic right, with the new proposal that would strengthen public order and counter terrorism. Within the bill, there were new detention outlines without any warrants and surveillance for up to 60 days, being military and or police. Sometimes it's the price we have to pay because the other side doesn't always play by the rules. Johnny out. Nothing to do with Southeast Asia, but quite a bizarre and somewhat interesting. A dog owner had taken his injured dog to the veterinary surgeon and he was told due to the damage to the leg of his dog that it would be better and more cost efficient to amputate. So with agreeance, the owner left the dog with the vet. Upon his return, you could imagine his outrage when he went to pick up his beloved pet to find out that they had amputated the wrong leg and the damaged leg, they would have to now operate on that to save the damaged leg. Upon confronting the veterinary surgeon, the answer was, oh, we're very, very sorry, sir. We don't know what happened, but we will do all this for free of charge. We're very, very sorry. Or we can put the puppy dog down and we'll give you some money and you can buy a new one. Johnny out. Friday must have been Christmas. The Transport Ministry announced 1.3 trillion baht spending on 10 transport mega projects. So some of this is even upgrades to the existing what was happening. But the, suspend, the spending has uh, been all over the place. The Metropolitan Rapid Transport System and motorway projects, the Eastern Economic Corridor, upgrades to Utopia, the high-speed rail, and port upgrades. Rail projects, upgrades, Nikon Rachisima, Nongkai, Konkan, Paknam, Shimpon, and Suratani. It's a lot of money being spent. Then again, creates employment too. So that's, all in all, a good thing. Johnny out.
As we know, the Chinese have taken over an island in the South China Sea that is really Philippine territory and has been threatening the Philippines. The US has now sent troops to help the Philippines from the Chinese invasion. Is this the start of something or the show of force? Is that to deter something? Only time will tell. Johnny out.